É, boa tarde. As, um, primeiro, eu facilitei a questão aqui para traduzir para português. Vão estar testando e vocês, por favor, tentem escutar para ver se já está funcionando. Para português e para espanhol. Um, eles vão atestar e vocês, por favor, se não ponga a ver se vocês já estão escutando bem. E se qualquer dificuldade, nos deixa saber. Gracias. Si usted tiene cualquier dificultad escuchando cuando las eh, cuando ellas hablen, por favor, levante sus manos y yo voy y uno les ayuda. Good evening. Welcome everybody to our first Family Academy workshop series for the school year. It's an honor to have you all here tonight. Um, we, this year, every year we have a presentation on bullying. It's such an important topic for our students and families to learn about bullying, how to prevent it, how to support your student, and how to report it. We're here if you have any questions afterwards, and thank you for our families that are joining in through social media and um, off our TV. Um, so our pre presenter tonight is Libby Gilday. Uh, she has presented for us in the past. She's from the Katie Brown um, program. They are in our schools and work with our students already, so we just thought it was a natural transition to also come and present to parents tonight. Welcome. Muito obrigada a todos vocês que nos honram pela vossa presença e esperamos, esperamos que durante, durante esse ano escolar vamos um, outra vez aprender muito juntos e nos divertir muito. Temos esse programa que vocês sabem e há um programa de classes de inglês para adulto que é no âmbito do programa Family Academy, um, porque é um programa educativo que estão muito obrigados. A gente vai junto aprender muito, crescer muito e para poder dar melhor assistência aos nossos estudantes da Fórum do Pobre do Sul. Muitas, muitíssimas graças por vocês que em esta noite é, estão aqui honrando-nos com tua presença. Durante este ano escolar, nós vamos aprender muito juntos, igual que no ano passado, e nos vamos divertir muito. E, e crescer juntos para melhor assistir a nossos estudantes de Fórum e Pobre do Sul. Muitíssimas graças. Um, Bem-vindo, por favor, que parle francês, por os participantes que são de um, Asian. Obrigado, merci, merci beaucoup uh, por ter me um, hoje aqui uh, esse evento. Merci beaucoup. Gracias. Um, muito obrigado. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, just like Monica said, my name is Libby. And I work for the Katie Brown Educational Program. The Katie Brown Program, um, again, just as everyone said, is in all Fall River public schools. So I am so excited to talk to you all tonight because I already see your, your kids in class, and I love to meet everyone's parents and caregivers um, and tell you a little bit about what we teach. So today, we are going to be talking about bullying, a couple things we will discuss. We will be talking about the school-based definition of bullying. In other Family Academy nights, many of you have asked me 
about what to do if your child is being bullied. So it will be helpful to go over the school definition of bullying. We will talk about the differences between bullying, harassment, and conflict. We will talk about the relationship between a bully, a victim, and a bystander. So someone who watches bullying happen and what to do if your child is showing any of these behaviors. And we will be talking about how to help your child. I'm so sorry about the microphone. Um, so when we look at the definition of bullying, most schools in Fall River use this definition, and this definition has four parts. Part one is power. Bullying behavior means that one person has power over another person. This can look like size, one child being bigger than another child. This can look like age. We often see older children bullying younger children. This can also look like social power. This can look like one student who has many friends bullying students who do not have many friends. Um, or even authority. So a student who is maybe the captain of a sport that is played, something like that. Bullying requires power, and bullying requires repetition. So bullying is a pattern of behavior. It's not just a one-time event. So even if a child hurts another child, the school does not consider it bullying until it is a pattern. It happens over and over again. Bullying also needs intent. So a bully is someone who wants to harm the victim. A bully is someone who wants to harm the victim. The bully will enjoy seeing a child upset or uncomfortable or angry. So bullying behavior usually looks like one student being excited that they have gotten a reaction from another student. And the fourth part of this definition is impact. Bullying hurts the victim or scares the victim. Um, it is so it's not a joke between friends. It's not a sign of affection. It is something that harms the victim. So when we look at the differences between bullying harassment, and conflict, we see a few different things. And for those of us who are following along with the Haitian Creole translation, this handout is a good example of what we are talking about. 
So we know that bullying, in order to be bullying, it has to happen on purpose. It has to be one-sided. So not two children fighting each other, one person with the power. It's something that happens many times. It causes hurt and fear. And one person has more power than the other. If we are looking at something that happens one time, we are looking at an incident of harassment, not bullying. If we are looking at something that happens maybe even multiple times, but it is two-sided, both students are participating, then that is conflict, that is social conflict, even if the behavior causes harm. So we are going to look at some examples to see whether these things would be considered bullying in our schools. All right, so first example, Flora comes to school with a new haircut and Michaela tells her it looks ugly. We know that this example is not bullying. Right? This example is not bullying because even though it is on purpose and it is one-sided, it is not a pattern. It did not happen many times. So because this only happened one time, This is an incident of harassment, not bullying. In our second example, Max makes a TikTok account where he makes multiple videos making fun of Kenny for his weight. That example would be considered bullying. So again, if we look at the criteria, he did that on purpose. It was one-sided. One student was hurting another student. It happened many times. The example said he made many videos that clearly hurt the other student, and one person in that situation had the power. Next example, Ricky calls Emmett a name during a basketball game, so Emmett hits him. Even though this is physical violence, this is not considered bullying because it was not one-sided. Both students were participating. One called a name, and then one hit the other. And it only happened once. So instead of bullying, this would be considered a conflict. All right, our last example, Julia has been telling everyone not to be friends with Rivka. Now, no one will sit with Rivka at lunch. That behavior would be considered bullying. So again, if we look at the definition, 
it's on purpose. So Julie is doing this on purpose. It is one-sided. One student is targeting another student. It's happening multiple times, so we see a pattern. It's hurting another student emotionally, and one person here has the power. So we saw in those examples that there are multiple different types of bullying. So we'll look at a few of them. Physical bullying is any time the student is using their body. So this could be hitting or shoving, but we also use our bodies to steal another student's possessions or follow someone around. In a school I worked at recently, one student had gotten a haircut he didn't like. So other students took off his hat and held his arms down so that another older student could take a picture of him. That would be considered physical because they are using their bodies to do that. So with physical bullying, that is anything where the student uses their body. Verbal bullying is any time the student is using their words. So that could be calling names, threatening, or even leaving mean comments on social media. We see that on TikTok, YouTube, really any social media. We also have emotional bullying. And emotional bullying is about targeting someone's insecurities or making fun of their identity, even controlling someone. And sometimes we have social bullying. Um, when we are spreading rumors, um, sometimes we see students tell other students not to be friends with someone or not to talk to someone and that is considered social bullying. So when we look at some signs that your child may be bullying other children, one of those signs is aggression. Children who bully other children often become aggressive in an argument very quickly, whether that is physical, emotional. Children who bully other children often manipulate. So if you notice your child is lying their way out of something or convincing others that they did nothing wrong, We talked about intent, so when someone enjoys distress, if you notice your child is trying to make people seem upset. We notice a lot of blaming others, so when your child does not want to admit 
that they made a mistake. And finally, lacking empathy. Um, if you tell your child they hurt someone, they respond with, oh, I don't care, right? Lacking empathy. So we have talked about this in other parent nights. Um, empathy is so important to be teaching our children. And we know empathy is when your child can feel for another person, see things from that person's point of view. So, very important that we model empathy. So, when we wonder out loud how someone is feeling, um, that shows our children how to use empathy. It also really helps to give your child caretaking responsibilities. So even putting them in charge of watering plants or taking care of pets, um, really good for empathy. And using media. This one is really easy and can be really fun. Um, if your child has a favorite TV show, ask your child how they think the main character feels. Um, and ask them to connect it to times that they felt that way. The next thing that is really helpful if your child is showing bullying behaviors is rational consequences. So that is when we give our children consequences that relate to what they did. So if, you know, as a teacher, if I have a student who vandalizes a desk, um, I'm not going to just say, you're missing recess, right? Because those things are not related. I might say, it's now your job to clean the desk or fix the desk. And here are some examples of what that looks like with bullying behavior. So when we think about rational consequences for bullying behavior, um, a child who is bullying is telling us they're not ready for social opportunities, maybe. Is this giving a lot of feedback? Is it making a weird sound for anyone? Okay, just checking. Alright, so we talked about signs that your child might be bullying. We're going to talk about signs that your child is a victim of bullying. One of these is actually the same as signs your child is bullying. Aggression, right? If your child is becoming aggressive at home, sometimes that is due to the stress of being bullied. Pulling away. If you notice your child is alone often, they are spending a lot of time in their room, they are not doing things they normally love. If you notice your child suddenly has really big emotions, they are crying about things they would not normally cry about, getting angry really suddenly. Really common one, 
unexplained headaches and stomach aches, especially in the morning before school starts. Lots of the time when a student is being bullied, this will happen. And this happens not just because they are trying to avoid the bully, it happens because stress actually makes us have headaches, stomach aches, physical things. And finally, avoiding. Your child has stopped doing their homework. They don't want to go out anymore. Maybe they don't want to see specific people. All of these are signs your child may be getting bullied. We're going to talk a little bit about what to do if your child is being bullied how to talk to the school, how to talk to your child. So when a child discloses to you that they are being bullied, um, ask lots of questions, and we like to recommend that your child does 80% of the talking an iceberg here with some parts of the iceberg under the water. That's because when a child tells you something about what's happening at school, they usually test first by giving you one tiny piece of the information. So assume there is more that they have not told you. Um, make sure your child knows that you believe them. Try not to judge or criticize your child. And check in often about how your child is feeling and if the bullying is still happening. All right. For anyone following along, this sheet here is going to detail what I'm talking about, but we are going to talk about how to report bullying to the school. So at school, teachers are trained to use very specific language when they decide when to file a report. So this is going to help if you are trying to report bullying happening to your child. So first thing is it's important to list the details. So you need to mention who is doing the bullying saying my child is being bullied by this person. You need to mention when, when this happened, um, because remember we're trying to create a pattern. So especially if you can write down all of the times that this happened, You want to mention where the bullying happened. That helps teachers to pay better attention to certain places, like the cafeteria. You want to mention specifically what happened, what type of bullying. Was there name calling? Um, was someone left out of a group? What type of bullying? So there are kind of two whens here. You need to say, you need to say when the incident occurred and when you were made aware, when you learned about the building. And the last one is witnesses. 
So write down any students who may have seen this happen.
with your child's teacher about your child's safety. It's also helpful to review social skills with your child that can help protect them. And one of the most important is boundaries, how to set a boundary. So setting a boundary has three steps. This is something we can do with our kids. Step one, you tell your child to name the behavior. Don't call me that name. Name the behavior they want to stop. Second part of setting a boundary is stating how the behavior makes them feel. It makes me feel angry. It makes me feel disrespected. And then we have our child decide a consequence that they can control. Um, for example, I'm going to tell the teacher if you do that again. I won't sit with you at lunch if you do that again. You want to practice this with your child all the time. You can give them different scenarios. You can role play that. But your child knowing how to set a boundary will definitely help protect them against bullying. Now, this is one of the most common things that my students say to me when I talk about reporting. When I talk about reporting and how important it is to report bullying or any kind of violence, my students all say this, but I don't want to be a snitch. Right? We hear our students say that all the time. Um, so it's really important to have a conversation with your child about why reporting is not snitching. So we might explain telling a teacher if someone is hurting or scaring you isn't being a snitch. It's actually being loyal to your class and your school and the rest of the students there. Reporting a bully keeps everyone else safer and protects them. So my students who worry about being a snitch usually feel that way because they are loyal kids and they want to protect their friends, but explaining that reporting actually is being loyal to your class and protecting other people in your class can help them feel encouraged to report. So we've talked about the victim, the person who is being bullied, We've talked about the bully, the person who is hurting or scaring another person. We're going to talk about the bystander. The bystander is someone who sees the bullying happen. Now, when we think about a power dynamic, sometimes we think that the power dynamic is only between the bully and the victim. The bully sends a message to the victim, a message like, you're worthless. And sometimes we think that the bystander is outside of that relationship until they choose to act. Either supporting the bully, which increases the message, or by supporting the victim, by saying you are worth defending. What we actually know 
is that even if a bystander does nothing, they are still contributing to the message that the bully sends. So if a bully in your child's class is telling a child you are worthless, the victim hears that message from the bully. But if a bystander does nothing, if your child sees that and does nothing, they are helping to tell the victim that they are worthless and they are helping the bully. By not saying anything, they are telling the bully what you're doing is normal and I'm okay with it. What we know when we look at the CDC data about bullying is that 57% of bullying stops when a bystander intervenes. So if we know that most bullying stops if someone watching says something, how can we teach our children to be bystanders. So just like it's important to talk to your child about how to set a boundary, it's also important to talk to your child about what they can do if they see someone being hurt or threatened or made fun of. So this looks like role-playing different situations. Asking your child, who could you tell if you saw a student punch another student? Asking your child, what would you say to a friend who made a mean joke about someone different from you? It's very important to include friends in these conversations because chances are at some point in school your child will have a friend who is a bully. We want to remind our children that seeing someone hurt another person and not say anything is supporting the bully and helping to hurt the victim. So the last thing we're going to discuss are different strategies we can tell our kids to use when they are bystanders. So just like before, they all begin with W. These all begin with D, easy to remember. Distract, so teaching your child to change the subject or bring attention somewhere else if they see someone being bullied. We call this one delegate, so bringing in someone who can help, maybe a teacher, maybe even a friend who can help distract. We call this one delay, approaching the victim after something happens to ask if they are okay. Document, so having your child um, remember details about what happened so they can help report. And defend, when we teach our children to defend, it's really important that they know we defend with our words, not with our bodies. So telling your child that the best defense is to name what has happened and tell the offender to stop. All right, that is what I have for everyone. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to either ask me now uh, or uh, come up and ask me after. 
Um, I will be here for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so if anyone has questions about reporting, about what bullying looks like, um, please feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for your time.